Right now I'm standing on the Palestinian side of the wall that separates the Palestinians from the Israelis. According to the Israeli government, the separation wall is a security measure built to protect against terrorist attacks and has resulted in a dramatic drop in Israeli deaths and casualties. It's also a flashpoint. There's been a lot of violence here, a lot of clashes between the Israeli forces and Palestinians, rock throwing, tear gas, killings. And of course, uh, right here, the ultimate symbol of divisiveness, Donald Trump uh, kissing the guard tower. Apparently he thinks it's his fourth wife. While we were filming at the wall, I was confronted by a group of pro-Palestinian activists. What do you think of this wall? Is this a normal wall? Well, no, I don't think any wall like this is normal. Do you? I'm Palestinian, I'm yeah. not at all. No, no. Not at all. No, it's sad. It's very sad, like it's an open air prison at the end of the day. That's not, you don't, you don't create peace by segregating people. And they can't keep saying, oh, well, they throw rocks. You've got M16s, you've got tanks. You can't compare that. There's also another side of it where there are people who would say, we don't want, we, we don't want the Jewish state well, to exist at all. We no, don't want to accept no, it at all. If you speak to Palestinians, you can go into refugee camps, which they would never take right. you, right? But you would be welcomed and people will welcome you into their home and give you the clothes. No, we're, we're on our way to, we, we wanted to go to a refugee which camp. One, with the IDF? No, we're not going with the IDF. Just we were headed, we were... Ida, Ida camp you're going to. Let me ask you a question. Do you, th what, is, what do you see as a solution? As a solution, well, one, America has to stop giving Israel $10 million a day just for weapons. Right. Once the weapons stop, Israel has no choice but to speak, to talk about peace. And right. if American people knew where their money was going, and the fact that when they, when, when, when our wonderful orange president got elected, and people are very sad that, that, um, Let's money, not go after him for having orange hair. Yeah. <laughs> now you're getting personal I, with I, me. Now you have, a, now you have a problem with me. It's his face. It's his face. No, but I got, I just got, that got very personal very fast. Well, here's what I can tell you. I can tell you that there's no way my 40 minute program is gonna satisfy what it is you no, want me to not, do. Not, now, hold on, let me just finish. Let me just what I do promise to do is make sure that people who watch this program will have an idea that this other reality exists. Right. Thank you for talking to me. I hope Thank you. you. Yeah, and I, uh, if you're cool with us putting this online, yeah, as it unfolded, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. The unedited version of this encounter can be found online, but to be fair, I must emphasize we did not have a similar conversation with the people who dispute these views. I'm standing here in Aida. It is one of the oldest Palestinian refugee camps. And tell us, what does this represent, the opening here? This is the gate of 1948. It symbolized the, the right of return for the refugees. Our grandfathers, they were forced to, to leave their villages, their houses. So they, they hold the keys. After 60 years, we are waiting for the international community to implement the UN Resolution 194 that gave us the right to return for our homeland. UN Resolution 194 came in the aftermath of Israel's first war with their Arab neighbors. Whether the refugees fled their homes or were forced from their homes is still a hotly disputed question to this day. The children that live here, are they growing up in a situation where they have no expectation that there'll be peace? We as Palestinians, we are teaching the people that we will have peace on this land. We can live together here. Would it be possible for me to go in and talk to some people? Is that possible? Yes, we can go. Hello, what is your name? My name is Shada. Do you live here in Aida? Mm -hmm. So I was born in Azakam, but then I married and came to live in Aida camp. Okay. So from camp to camp. Do you feel like people in America understand what's happening here? So, do you know we have a problem with the uh, American uh, government, but uh, we don't have any problem with, uh, with the people. And I uh, tried before to travel to America, but they uh, uh, refused my uh, visa. Mm -hmm. You so, couldn't get a yeah. visa to come in? Because at that time I went to continue my master's degree there. What was your master's in? Did Environmental you... studies. Environmental studies. Wow, a very impressive person. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, best of luck to you. Thank you. Did these guys all grow up in the, here in Aida? Yes. Who's the cool one here? Who's the coolest guy here? Him. <laughs> he's the cool guy. There's always one, if you get three kids together, there's always he's the leader. There's one cool guy. <laughs> You're the boss, right? Yes. <laughs> Like that, it's like, yes, yes. What do they want to say to kids their age in America? Would they like to come visit America someday? Inshallah. 
Yes. What would he like to see in America? Statue of Liberty? Statue of Liberty, you want to see that? Yes. Okay. Trump. Trump. You want to meet Trump. That's the guy you want to meet. This is the last one. Oh, my gosh.